Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Middlesbrough District Council, I'd like to welcome you to the Keeping Hospitality at Home webinar, one of 13 events providing support to local businesses for Enterprise Week in Middlesbrough. Just a quick bit of housekeeping before we start. The session today is being recorded um, so that we can upload to the Council's website for those of you who couldn't attend today or if you wish to rewatch the webinar. However, your microphones and cameras are turned off by default, so you won't feature in the recording at all at any time. We want the session to be as interactive and engaging as possible, so please do um, feel free to enter questions into the Q&A box, which is on your Zoom toolbar as we go through the session. We will address all of these in a Q&A a little bit later. I'm delighted to introduce today's speakers. With us today, we have James McGinn, Managing Director of Hastings Hotels, Claire Murray, owner of Deli on the Green and the Loft Coffee Bar in Dungannon, and Dermot Friel, current owner of the fifth generation Friel's Bar and Restaurant. Claire and Dermot will be joining us in a a bit shortly um, to tell us of their experiences and their businesses. However, I'd like to now hand you over to James McGinn. Feel free to take notes as you go, but any slides will be sent over to you as well later today. Yes, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and firstly, thank you for inviting me to be involved here this afternoon. And thank you to Claire and Dermot for joining us on the panel. Um, I think as in, in the, the whole ethos of this is coming out of post-COVID, where we're all challenged to think about adapting, evolving and overcoming the challenges that we have faced right throughout. I think the mix of the panel is very strong in that I'm probably very large and upscale, and then it takes it right to the heart of businesses operating in the local communities and the things that we've had to do in order to try and survive in many cases keep ahead or a pace of ourselves and now deal with the, the ever increasing um costs that we're all incurring via labor utilities and services right throughout it makes hospitality which is very labor intensive to begin with um again face yet another struggle so to begin with, I'm just going to share some of the things that we as large scale operators have had to do in order to adapt uh, to survive. And that kind of includes everything from and not it's all about people and not unfortunately, but it generally is about people uh, investment in technology that in some cases makes people more efficient and then exactly what we do for our people the proposition that we put to them and how we look after them because ultimately it is people who drive profit and we're all struggling to recruit and retain talent at the moment. Um, Brexit hasn't helped us, you know, the industry, well-being, lifestyle and COVID and furlough certainly haven't us. But just to give you a flavour um, of, of what it is uh, that we offer, I'm going to show you one short one minute video. If you bear with me. Bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other So yes, that, that just gives you a little insight as to the, the six properties that, that I manage and the eight to 900 employees currently on our books. And why I thought it important to show that is that when we talk about trends and what's on point, can you imagine a world where you didn't have a bar to go to, you didn't have restaurants to visit, you didn't have hotels to go and stay in? That world of hospitality is about everything that is cool and vibrant and young and it's aspirational. It's the things that people want to aspire to do. So we don't have a choice but adapt and change in order to attract the people to come in to be able to service 
that need. And if we just move on to the next slide, one of the things that we've had to do is invest very heavily in our systems because the systems provide us with knowledge. Knowledge is king and data is critical to help us make the right decisions. So you need the information at the right time to make the best informed decision. So we use an accounting package called SAGE, which literally this has only been brought in in three years. We at Hastings have come from a, a family, very local um, owned and operated property, which we still are, but we might have been very much behind the times in terms of data technology because we were family based. Um, so our, our accounting system is SAGE. Fourth, fourth is our employee, uh, our payroll, our time and attendance system, which we, we, we so everybody gets their rota to an app on their phone, become part of our engaged community, and we communicate directly to individuals via that. You can use it to find out your rota, request your holidays, see how much money you have in the bank, um, and things like that. See Me Hired is a direct recruitment protocol portal that we use now so that we try to gather as much information about the, the, the applicants um, on online and we can screen them online, we can invite them to interview online, we can interview them online, etc. And then the fourth piece of, of digital learning is our flow learning. And this is really good, particularly for those people that don't have a human resource and training element to it so you go into it and you get you have to learn about health and safety food hygiene you have to do all and you have to do your induction you have to do all the mandatory and legislative stuff that the environmental officers and health and safety um health and safety officers expect us to learn so they can do that on their phones as well and it prompts them and they can also do management things. So they're all about our recruitment or learning development stuff. So we, we've had to move with the times and that took a huge investment. We started that before COVID, um, but then in COVID we ended up going into redundancies and everything. So at one stage, my, my, my staffing levels were down to 300. Now they're back up again to 800 people, 300 people that I kept on on furlough to, to manage the buildings. But then as we were coming out of that, again, I don't know how much that's been uh, uh, given to the likes of Clare and Dermot at the local level, but Tourism Northern Ireland had a, a, kick, a kickstart recovery programme, which is in the next slide. Uh, and I really embraced that in order to deal with three main areas. One was the, the digital innovation, which I just talked about. The other one was some people don't even give you business unless you have a sustainability policy. And then the other one was purely about recruiting talented people and developing them. And in doing that for Hastings, the next slide will demonstrate we took through three different approaches. So we had to look at our competitive set. We were no longer the employer of choice. We were finding it difficult to recruit and retain staff. We, for the first time in 30 years, ended up using agency staff which really we never ever did before in our lives. And we all know how costly they are to engage and then the impact that they have on the staff that you have. So we've gone through a whole, what do we look like as an employer? You know, what are our people telling us? What's our proposition to them? How are we managing their health and well-being as well? So then the fresh approach was, again, everything was focused on how we, how we deal with, with our employees. Right from the moment that they onboard, so their induction, we find and have found that we have lost most of our people in the thir first 30 to 60 days. So what was wrong with our induction? What are we not doing right? How do we make it better? How do we make our culture more focused on our people, even through the provision of you know, nice uniforms, food, beverage, bathrooms. We don't have staff rooms now. We have um, comfort hubs, things like that, that would actually help their experience as opposed to the guest experience. And then lastly, from a people perspective, we've embarked on this, it's like a timeline. So from you physically start 
till you exit the business? What is your learning journey like along that period? And what do we have to focus on in order to keep you, retain you, develop you with skill sets to allow you to move through the business and have a talent proposition that exists out there? And that's just something that we need to do about with our people. And then ultimately everything at the moment, every time we turned as a large organization and we're prospecting for business abroad, what's your sustainability policy? How environmentally and sociable, socially are you adapt to, to your surrounding areas? How is your business um, uh, um, trying to uh, get that accreditation? And it's not just about getting another label, it's actually what are you doing with your heat, your electricity, your garbage, your food waste, et cetera, measuring your waste as much. So that's in the next slide. And we've been very successful at coming out of COVID. You can see we've just managed to get silver and not all of our hotels, but just, just in the Europa, the Grand Central and the Stormont. Europe is a huge conferencing town. So we got silver um, uh, uh, out of that. Which, which was very good. And then just the next stage, it would be, again, it's just that digitalizing on every, young people, everybody's using digital now. People like me struggle with this because I, I, I went to university and school. We didn't have computers. You know, we were still writing everything. Um, but now everybody wants everything online. So and that's right about what we look like on the website. Um, what our brand looks like as an employer, never minding what it looks like to, um, to the consumers on the other end of it. So that's something that we looked at really, really closely. So trying to cover all those things that I mentioned in the kickstart. And then ultimately going on to the next slide, it was again, maintaining what life at Hastings is about. I've been here 27 years. Um, so I'm fully stepped in the in the culture of Hastings, where we're family owned. It's all about local produce uh, and um, and investing in the local economy, and also being authentic. You know, we're just people. We're real. We get it right. We get it wrong. We try to make it better. And with that on authenticity comes a certain level and service expectation that we have from that. But after that, we, we, we were very clear. I think it's important about every business to be very clear about what your vision is. So in the next slide, it tells us exactly what we want to be. We're a family owned company and we want to be known for the finest in Irish hospitality. When we go to hire people, we want people whose core values meet your values. So they need to be passionate and committed. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, you know, at one stage, we used to say, if they've got a pulse, take them. When, when we came out of COVID there last July, August, September, if they had a pulse, I would have taken them because we just could, we, we literally almost couldn't cope with the demand that we had. Like you had your two meter separation, one party at the table, we were spraying people every time they moved, never mind got to their bedroom. You couldn't to go to a bar, you couldn't leave your table very difficult and coming out of that. But we also then the managers have to inspire leadership, have enthusiastic people. And I know it's an old thing. We all have, we all have those that, you know, you want to give a, you want to give a push to, or you, you know, really, but ultimately when you always reflect after they leave, you always say, God, I should have let them go a long time ago because they were doing me no favors. You know, it's knowing the effect that that has and again, just everybody at the minute, it's about being efficient, being creative, being innovative, and knowing that, you know, we're working under very, 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 very tight budgets at the moment. So the only way you can do that is, next slide, is like, look after your people. You know, look after the people that you employ. You know, we give birthday days off in, in addition to, to their statutory days. Um, we, we all, everything that you can see there outside of the training and development that we, that we offer free meals on shifts. And um, we also have the trunking system, which allows for tipping as well, which enhances their salary greatly. 
So these are just the things that we now have to be proud about and actually tell people, you know, it's no good being underneath under the radar at the moment. You have to come out fighting because everybody's fighting for the same talent and the same pool. And it's that's a small pool at the moment across every sector. So you've got to really capture what it is you're offering, offering your employees so that you actually entice them. Because when you get in, actually, it's not the industry that people talk about. It's very affable. It's very, um, if you have the right personality, it's very rewarding. Um, and it can be fun. Um, and sometimes the fun gets you into bother, but, you know, finding that balance. But then you will know that coming out of COVID, it's all about, I don't want to work weekends. I don't want to work nights. I'm stressed. Um, I need to balance my lifestyle. Well, we all do, but we all have to find ways of doing that. Oh, I need support. You're not supporting me. So really and truly, one of the things in the next slide that you'll see that we haven't got there yet, and you can see from the, you know, the right-hand side, we have um, embarked upon our own Hastings Wellbeing. We have our own, um, our own patented hashtag, Lend an Ear, which we have, you know, if people are in trouble, and if you talk about it, I come and have my ear for 10 minutes and we'll talk about it. But uh, we do have a, a wellbeing charter and we also have an employee assistance program, which they can go out. So, you know, people go off stress and they say stress at work. It's probably not. They might have money trouble at home. They might have relationship trouble. They might be sick. So they just want to be guided and signposted to someone. So, I mean, we do that and we, we have a committee, a social and wellbeing committee that's set up and have regular, like we do race at your pace. We get them out walking or cycling. And we do that as individual hotels and go and as a group. So and then finally, I think, I suppose the next slide is just this is what we actually do. That, that's just my different GMs in different hotels in the last three months, rewarding their teams. You know, the bottom ones, the Europa, Everglades, Grand Central, um, Head Office, the Spa, the Clodden, the Clodden Hotel. So it's everybody just taking time out and making time for their people. And that's continued on the next page. We, we, we actually associate ourselves with AWARE. They're our charity of choice. So that's AWARE Defeat Depression that helps you with lifestyle. And they come in and give you free training to your teams, you know, whether it's on suicide awareness or stress management or just, you know, breathing, you know, having meditations. I know meditation sounds waffly, but it's not really. I mean, it's literally stepping outside the bar door taking five minutes to yourself and learning breathing techniques, just small, quick techniques that you can work uh, uh, on board. And then I suppose the last slide really, if you don't believe what I've just told you, if you watch hotel people at all over the last, last few months, you know, that was a works and all um, depiction of how difficult it was coming out of COVID. But now we're totally out the other side and we have a greater degree of stability. But it's the, what you can see from it is the values that we have. At no stage did you ever see a customer not getting what they were expecting to get because we were hiding it all behind, you know, behind the scenes, which you always do in your kitchens and in your bars, but you don't want that translated. And I think most of all, it showed how we come together as a team under Terrible conditions, happy conditions, joyous occasion, conditions, but we always love to win, a will to win. I think Chef said it in one of his VTs, it's like, if they don't have the right attitude or don't want to be in my kitchen, then they shouldn't be in my kitchen. You know, and that's very hard to tell, to do, because sometimes you need them. But then when you don't need them, they pull together because your people respect you more for not tolerating those that, that don't do, you know. We always go to the busy ones to get things done, but we don't always deal with the ones that won't do the things we want them to do. We turn a blind eye. So it's just learning those wee things. I mean, but I think that was a great depiction of the creation that we need to be doing, how we need to adopt and evolve, and the issues that we have overcome. 
And we haven't overcome them all yet. You know, we're still using agency. We still have, um, we still have an employment need, particularly in the craft areas of cookery and pastry. Uh, uh, and indeed, uh, you know, bartenders are like a good bartenders are like hen's teeth at the moment. And then with all of this has become unrealistic expectations for people that are walking in saying, oh, I'm a comedy chef, I want to earn 30,000 pounds. And I'd like Friday and Saturday off, if you don't mind, for my well-being, really. You know, so it's managing and juggling all those expectations without being unsympathetic. So I think that's a good way to open the panel discussions and hear what Claire and Dermot have experienced coming out of COVID. They're probably the same things, only on different scales. Yeah, are we good to go with that, Claire? Dermot? Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, Claire. Sorry, Claire, go ahead. Yeah, um, totally agree. Um, really enjoyed that, uh, James, and really could resonate with um, a lot of points that you had. And uh, one of the things that I did do, um, I actually had a uh, oh, um, manage two sites um, and 80 staff. So I'm on a, on a tenth of, of what you, you have to deal with. Um, but what I actually have noticed that um, I suppose in COVID that um, especially with my management supervisor and, and that level of um, um, skilled staff, um, they were probably the ones that are most shocked um, in COVID um, and, and really, I suppose, upset with the vulnerability hospitality became, yeah. that the entry of hospitality seem to be the most vulnerable um, in relation to a pandemic where it wasn't the same for every other industry. Yeah. And, um, and, and I've lost um, um, great staff um, because of that, because they wanted, you know, if this is going to come again, then is this going to happen again? I can't go through this again. And, you know, so we have that, we had that to deal with it as well. But, you know, James, as well as you know, in terms as well, like, hospitality is you're either you are the actor or actress or you're not and that's what hospitality is you know I say to my staff when you walk out we, we call this the kitchen the backstage because you well, walk out I could show you thing that where I'm sitting <laughs> now I have the thing that says the stage door and it says <laughs> look at me smile at me talk to me and thank me yeah but it is the case because I'm saying when you walk out those kitchen doors, you are on show, you're on stage, everybody, you're performing and you're, what you're doing is then, then you're giving your performance then to the customer that's paying, sitting down, their expectations, what they, the service they want, the cocktails they want, the drinks, the food, and it all, everybody's doing it all comes together. And then when they walk out the door, it's like breathe again. And then the next person comes in, you know, and, I think in that an excitement um, actually brings more people into the industry knowing that, well, you know something, this, you know, like we have so many kids that come into us, you know, while they're in university, it's not their real job as yes. they talk about. Yes, they're, they're, just um, up. they're just topping up. Yes. Yeah. And we, we depend on them. Right. And yeah. it's great yeah. to have, but they always come back and say the skills that they learned in life, in hospitality could take them anywhere in the world and well, you can't say that about it you and can't say that so transferable Claire as well correct I think yeah. one of the things and you're quite right to say the, the biggest the biggest thing was because hospitality was so decimated people were forced into other industries whether it was Tesco's or a lot of them went into super masses of them in Belfast masses of my team went into Amazon Mm -hmm. yeah. 150 parcels every day under serious pressure on the roads mm -hmm. and then getting them back as you say was just almost it was so difficult because they didn't have to work weekends they didn't have to work evenings they didn't have to work shifts so therefore it was like how do we compete with that mm -hmm. but what yeah, they were no. all missing was they're by themselves all day with a parcel yeah yeah <laughs> they're not with the team and the other thing is too like you know I know I have staff members who say that they love coming to work every day because every day is a different day and that is the actor actress or whatever on in them because 
It's like we're we're doing the show, but we're not on stage effectively. And either you have it or you don't. And we can see it with young ones coming uh, through as well. Um, but I would say from from COVID, you know, it, you know, like COVID was terrible. It was terrible for businesses. It was terrible for people. People lost loved ones. But I have to say that from a small business person, it gave me the kick up the ass I needed yeah. to um, have a look at the what uh, what tech I was using, like yeah. yourself, yeah. James. Um, yeah. I introduced new ways of um, um, of having the staff um, clock in and out. Yeah. I had to on, be more efficient, Claire. More efficient, absolutely. And the same with getting our sales on and seeing what we're doing every day. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the important thing. The important thing is seeing that, that like, did we make money last week? Yeah. You know, and if we didn't, what do we have to change this week? So yeah. because that's that's where we are at now. And then the would you communicate that down, Claire? Would you have a system of communicating that, saying to the floor staff, yeah. you need to upsell this so we get X, Y, and yeah. Z, or the kitchen yeah. orders of the chef, you you can't buy your next yeah. loin of fillet. Yeah. And the other thing is, too, what we did, what we did actually, we started at the back door, actually. So what we started at the back door was that instead of, you know, everybody being responsible to, for taking off the sheet to say that it all came in, right, that there was a responsibility that one person was responsibility for two companies that come in because you know we deal with a few, a few but they're mostly coming in every other day yeah. so their responsibility was i find that i my credits coming back from companies were going through the roof where i never got a credit every a month i was getting maybe two or three credits every week because you were so looking at it we were looking at it because claire that's the one thing even we as a large organization i went to the club on the other day and i saw a delivery mm -hmm. delivered at the cultural inn with a delivery docket sitting underneath the block of whatever it was. But it hadn't been signed in, it hadn't been counted, it hadn't been verified. So I ended up to the GM and said, well, what's that all about? Mm -hmm. So you're, what you found was when you started to focus on these things, think of all the credits you missed beforehand. Well, this is it. Because we know, we know that they do automated invoices. And sometimes they'll say things are in back order or that you've received stuff that you actually didn't. No. No, and, and we are fighting from actually from January, last January, with some um, companies that big orders well, came out. Well, um, we remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, too, you have to prove you have to prove it to people. But you also have to prove it to staff realizing that, that you know, something they want to take pride in the job, making sure that they know. Because what we're saying is that like everything counts. Every single thing counts. Everything that you put in the, in the bin, we have actually paid for. Yeah. That is accountable. And they realise that. And we have changed it a bit. Look, there's always conversations that we've had and yeah. you have to get people on board. But when they do come you, on board... Do you, do you have the issue that I have? Is, is teaspoons a big thing down there? <laughs> teaspoons <laughs> and jam coops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think maybe at this stage we'll bring Dak Dermot in to yeah, discuss yeah. a little bit about yeah. his experiences and related yeah. to both doors. Because yeah. I think there's commonality probably. There, in there is commonality. But can, can I just um, finish off just by saying that, um, and this is nothing to do with COVID or coming back out of the brink of it, um, August time was always a time when I lost a lot of stuff in the Loft Coffee Bar because it's a tray I have service. I don't know if you've been there, James. Yes, is the, that the one upstairs? Yes, uh huh. So it's amazing. But, <laughs> thank you. But I have to say, you know something. We nearly would have had to put plastic out, plastic spoons and forks out because I think <laughs> every student house in the country. <laughs> <laughs> but we always we always seem to lose in August, or maybe we're just we, we're just more focused. I don't know. <laughs> That's actually a big. That's quite a large operation in loft. It is, yeah. Yeah, so when you go up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Thank you. Always very busy. Yes, no, it's great um, because there's a quick in, quick out, um, and it's great for the chefs as well, you know, where the deli on the green is um, a la carte service stuff yeah. isn't yes. produced until it's yeah. ordered. The loft have reduced their product. Yeah, and their know an, oil, an oil friend of mine down there, Stevie Hayes. Oh, yeah, I do, Stevie. I do. <laughs> I do indeed.
Kermit, Perfect. do you want to come in and tell us a little bit about your offering and your experience, actually, more importantly, because I love the fifth gender. I come from a big family in Tyrone, um, and we've all been, they, they all, all, I have 10, I'm one of 10 siblings, and they, they all still live in Tyrone except me, so I know all about that generational family thing. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not good. Oh, well, it's good, you know, you all know there's been no other eye over the years, but uh, to be honest, um, no, I consider myself the key holder to the next guy comes along. And um, I've been very fortunate that the, the property was in the family business. I suppose all you're trying to do is make your own mark and do your own best that you can be and bring, bring the people with you. And uh, I really enjoyed your presentation there, James. And you too, Claire, like, um, because we are nothing without our people, and I have discovered that this last 30 years working working in the bar and restaurant here, and you have to diversify as well, and you have to, you know, depend on your, your people as well, being flexible and diversifying too, and COVID certainly was, uh, was certainly very trying on the staff uh, coming out of COVID, you know, with all the regulations and that as well, and you sort of you sort of really find out who's in your camp and what members yeah, of staff were set so up in the mark, you know, and 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 to be honest, some of them weren't able to cope with it, and uh, unfortunately, we lost staff as well here, you know. But but certainly, you know, it's a it's a the hospitality is a massive learning journey every day. But COVID just seemed to uh, spring forward things that you were doing with your business. You know, I had tele systems and uh, and QR codes on. QR codes, a system available for QR codes for outside for uh, the beer garden areas. I had that available with a new tell system I put on about 18 months before COVID. But I had told the guy, you know, that put the tell system in that I would never need that. You know, we don't need QR codes in Swatley, you know, but yeah. I suppose I was lucky. You know, I suppose I was lucky enough to have it in place. And then when COVID kicked in and then we were coming out of COVID, uh, I was very simply, it was very easy to, to adapt my systems here yeah, yeah. and we extended our beer garden and stuff like that there and, and to be honest, you know, we were sort of ready for it to be lucky enough, you know. But, I think, uh, Jeremy, you were probably very fortunate in that in Swatter and that you had the land that you could, because all of a sudden you could drink outside but you couldn't drink inside and you could drink yeah. in beer gardens and you couldn't, you know, it, it became, yeah. I mean, for you guys, it was almost a lifeline if you had space to create that outside environment. Uh, that's very, yeah, very, that's very true. Like, and we went to, uh, we doubled the license size of the property. We were very fortunate to have plenty of space out the back. And to do and, that, uh, Jeremy, our, did you have to go to licensing and, you know, it yeah. cost money to do that. You know, it wasn't like you put up another set of fences and all of a sudden you were allowed to serve drink in the fields. You know, you had to well, actually spend no, money and to, invest money to do that we had it yeah we had to invest and go to the courts you know and like 10 years ago we done a small beer garden you know and look i don't know whether it's, uh, it's the irish people or what it is you know the beer garden done okay wedding after parties and various functions and charity dues but people were always more inclined to come inside but certainly coming out of COVID, you know our beer garden was really busy and then that's why we just doubled the size of it and people are just I don't know whether that's the, Euro the European element from you go out to yeah, there's there a bit of that too. Top tip: you know, people, people, some people are putting awning over the beer tents and then the heaters yeah. as well that allows them to go out and smoke and drink at the same time. Because let's face it, outside of having a mild November, we we didn't have the best summer, you know either. No, no. no listen, no, I look. I agree. It's summer, to be honest. You know, we we put a stretch tent with a with an extra space to holds up over a hundred people. You know, to an add on to the beer the roof. Yeah, very good. So we we can you now use it for some smaller functions. You know, and but one thing out of COVID, like we no longer we're like we no longer serve alcohol to one o'clock in the morning here. Like we we only serve up till about twelve o'clock. We're licensed to one a.m. But we've decided to say, you know, look. This is our policy. That's what we do. You know, people are coming out to us earlier, and, and we don't now do run a late house. You know, to one or half one in the morning. So, um, we, we've diversified a wee bit there as regards that. Some customers have got on with it the best. All our customers, you know, we, we might have lost a few, but but that's the way we want to run our business. And uh, yeah. you know, we've also diversified as regards. We put on a wee motorhome park. You know, a, a car park at the rear of the property and. 
I suppose them things are just all we add on to so try and yeah. Well, you have to try and be innovative to bring in the income yeah. in some other fashion. And and you just touched on the point there, Dermot and Claire. I don't know if you were the same, but we certainly are, and we we haven't quite come out of it in that because we just didn't have the level of business. Not that we didn't have the level of business, we didn't have the the skill set or the resources. You know, so in our fine dining, our five star hotels. It was point you couldn't run two restaurants, you couldn't run your grill bar and your a la carte, you know, five nights a week. You just couldn't, you know. I'm sitting in Europe today. I mean, we still haven't got round to opening our lobby bar, you know, six days a week because we just don't have enough barmen. We can't find enough barmen at the moment to to give it that. So I think it's getting better, but I think certainly coming out of COVID. You may have only been opening your restaurant four nights a week or you had to curtail what you're offering and your service times for doing that. Did you find that? Well, to be honest with you, we're closed now in the month of November, two days a week. We're closed Tuesday and Wednesday. Wow. We, we couldn't get the kit, kitchen team back together again um, for a seven day week operation. Even the full summer there, we were closed one day a week at Tuesday. It broke my heart because we would get a lot Is that of the first time, people. Dermot, you've had to do that? You know, close yeah, to the yeah. Day. We never, we've never done that. God, save us, never done that ever. It's not know. a sign of the time. It's a sign of the time. Um, look, listen, we hope to be go to a seven day week operation from next summer. You know, but and we're working towards that. We've, uh, we're putting on a new visitor center here next year, and I just have to go on publicly and say it. You know, the support from TNI, uh, James, you mentioned earlier there. You know, through all the platforms we had with. We've lost you there, Dermot. Dermot, we've lost your sound. Is that okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now? you know you're back now. So you were saying about the support and the platforms. Ah, uh, we get tremendous support with TNI and the platforms and all the good to go campaigns and stuff. And we were fairly stringent in our measures here as well. And TNI supported us really well. Came out and advised us and. Uh, Look, the, tour, the tourism board, you know, are a fantastic asset for, for our hospitality industry. And, and, yeah, uh, and I, you know, they, they are also, Claire uh, and Dermot, just, you know, they're about to, re and it's open to everybody, you know, it's not just the Belfast people, you know, they're about to relaunch their Kickstart programs, where you yeah. can buy, you can, if you apply, you can get expertise in business planning and development, IT. Now, you don't get money, but you get amazing support um, mm -hmm. uh, through experts that are given to you. So you get it for digital sustainability as well. Um, so there, you know, you should watch out for those coming up because they're open to everybody. Um, also, Dermot, um, I was just thinking there, like we have got a lot of support through um, the local council and um, with Southwest yeah. College. Um, yeah. on having staff members that maybe were never considered um, mm -hmm. to become pastry chefs or do their level two chefing or whatever, our Bristol skills um, that had taken up and, and especially a lot of ones that were KPs who yes. we give a flavour of actually maybe doing something else in the kitchen one day a week have come up back and say, look, well, you know, I see myself, I, this is what I want to do and this is what I want to make my career at. So, you know, we have been lucky. We've had a, a few uh, come through uh, and that's what kept us going the seven days. Do you find, guys, that you, you have a, a, a loyalty? Do you have a, a group that are loyal to you that work or is your is your, is your your staffing transient? You know, I think maybe the deli, because it's students all the time or do you have a core? No, we do have a core loyal team that have been with me from you know, way back, um, mm. and the same in, in the law, we've been very, very lucky, um, and it's definitely very much a team, a family team, um, and do look out for each other, and, you know, it's not just about their work environment, it, you know, it's about their personal environment, and they yeah. are very close as a group of, of people, and do help each other. I think that's the lovely, I think that's, and I'm not saying it against the internationals or the larger, because we're quite the large, but because we're family-owned, we have, we have a genuine care. Mm, you, you really yeah. do care about your people. You do want them to work to the best, be the best that they can be, but you actually do care about them or... The well, you want them to be happy <laughs> in their work. Happy. Did you guys find, and I know in, in that area of Dungannon and all, did you find Brexit 
has stopped a flow of people that we would normally get. Like we find it hugely in, in the city. You know, the European students that would come for two or three years or. No, um, not, not, so with, not with Brexit. And, you know, and Dungannon actually are a massive industry for agri-food. And there's a you lot are, of... Yes, with Moy Park and skiing yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, so there are, there's a huge um, um, influx of people we have had probably in the past few years. I would say, look, we did lose some um, skilled staff who decided to go back home to other parts of Europe or didn't want to be... Um, you know, stuck really, I suppose, yes. in one place and, and not have the freedom to travel where they wanted to. Um, but having said that, um, you know, any any anybody that actually had come here to make it their home have have stayed and, and they brought people with them into the industry as well yes. because yes. they yes. know somebody who is thinking of, of coming on board. Do you know, and Claire, that's just, I was in a meeting yesterday with our bartenders here because Europe is going into Christmas. It's like, it's like party time. It's like <laughs> three, three ballrooms. And the, the guys were telling me yesterday, the best way that they had, their most successful recruitment strategy was friends of friends. Yeah. People that were working in and encouraging them and bringing them in and getting them to see, can you recommend, can you recommend? And they've built up a lovely wee team. But it wasn't through, you know, or or marketing or everything. It was literally from their experience going out and telling people, you know, come in and see this and see what it's like, you know, see if it's for you. And that works. But do you genuinely find that you have an adequate pool of labor? Well, certainly from 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 my point of view, you know, my sustainability house. coming in, my lights have gone out because <laughs> I haven't moved. <laughs> Well, well, certainly from her point of view, a bar runner who would buy a bar stalker and, you know, look after the stores and that there, he normally wouldn't get to do the bar with us over the years. He'd have to be with me a year, 18 months. Um, I found coming out of COVID, my bar runners were doing bar within two weeks. Yes. Um, and I just, yes. I just, I had to, I had to adapt. You know, we're normally pre-COVID, I would have had 15 uh, part-time staff. You know, now I have nearly 30. You know, yeah. so uh, my part timers are very loyal, but they they don't want to work three chefs a weekend. They we just have the company here. They only want to work two, uh, one shift or two shifts. You know, so um, we've had to adapt and be flexible with that. But we're very lucky. We've got a lot of a pool of local people here, and yeah. uh, they, they're all a lot of them at university in Belfast and Derry City and that there. And we have them for three or four years, and with probably three or four members of family in the one house. You know, all came through and done the freeze experience, and they all went on to be dentists or doctors or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, probably not in hospitality, but I've I've grew to accept that 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 these people aren't going to have a career with me in hospitality, James. I just have got them for that three or four years, so I have to make use of them as best I can. I suppose maybe you find that too, Claire. Yeah, well, we we would we would, but you know something, it's funny. Um... I would say more in, in, in the deli because we have late nights there on a Sunday um, and we have more students in that business. Now, because the loft is actually a Monday to Saturday, it's a daytime business and does breakfast straight through to, you know, we, we, we close at five o'clock. So and it, it, there's a bit of a shopper experience down there as well. But the thing is, we haven't changed. We are We don't have many students in the loft and the thing is because we don't have that night time and we don't have a Sunday opening and that has yeah. worked to our favour. You, you have quite a mature staffing in that area. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Very and lucky. Very lucky. You have like, um, some of them are European, am I right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And the same within the deli, you know, for all our, our daytime staff and yes, and a few nighttime staff, they all, you know, take turns and there's a couple of managers, supervisors, etc. But right. the thing about the main thing is that um, our skilled staff probably has an average um, age group of 40. That's really good. So, you know. Yeah, that's a new thing as well. Yeah. Well, the other thing is too, <laughs> in an odd 10 years time, we need to keep, you know, and we've had them, they, you know, 10 years ago, there were 30, you know, the, the same ones coming through. So, so another, and, and, and you're and you're starting. Years and another 10 years, I'd be retired. 
<laughs> just, just a question that's come in here um, from mm -hmm. from the outside to the panel, um, mm -hmm. very much um, based on the fact that within you know Belfast and Derry, um, London Derry, they're they're proposing that at Christmas we do a lot to attract people, whether through markets or pantomimes or just experiences. We create experience. <coughs> we create experiences to attract people. Do you think that um, Mid Ulster could make a bigger effort collectively to try um, and come up with an innovative offering of experiences that would bring people in? I honestly think. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Sarah. Well, like the thing about for for Dungannon, unfortunately, we don't have um, we have a few bed and breakfast, but we don't have a hotel here, yeah. James. If you want yeah. to have a look at the if the Hastings would like to have a, maybe a nosy, that's I a remember, couple of minutes. I can like, remember like, actually, I can remember the hotel that belonged to the guys that was in the middle of the town. Um, they were from Oma originally. He owned the Royal Arms. Oh yes, and 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 Noma, um, yeah, oh, yeah. No. I can't remember their names anyway. Yes, I know that you did. So, so, so we don't have, you know, there um, and there are loads of experiences, you know, around Dungannon, you know, the the Todd Sleep, the, you know, people oh, actually really? love. There's loads of numbers going to Dungannon Park. It's an amazing looking park. So it is for a I day. I wonder Todd's Leap doesn't come up with some kind of, you know. Polar Express Santa experience for the kids, and that would be great. Well, there is there is um, uh, one in, in Coal Island that do, does that Polar Express. Oh, really? Um, yeah. But you know something? The yeah. thing about it is, like, there's always booked. They, they, they're always booked up, and it's not an ad hoc making decision, like, you know, or let's, what we'll do tomorrow. You know, and they, this is what probably what we're finding as well. But I have to say that... Um, people's experience you talk about having experience people just want an ambience right mm -hmm. and how that looks you know that can be made with music with lighting and with the personalities that you have in your business Absolutely. Um, so it doesn't matter you know they don't need the glitzy you know it all, just needs to be atmospheric it needs to be atmospheric and you it's know, all and, about mood lighting and music yeah. i yeah. love that yeah. i walk in somewhere <laughs> And the lighting and the music is just right. You go, love it, love it, love it. So, so that's all. Yeah. That's all any business needs, really. That's the first thing we need. Okay, just another yeah. comment from um, um, a, uh, another uh, uh, guy to, to both of you. Really, it's Tim's like you know the way afternoon tea has become so popular in the city, like and everywhere. Yes. Really, what do you guys do in terms of your food offering to keep ahead of the pace and know know what to bring in and try? And then when you bring it in, how do you build it as to an offering? Um, for me personally, we actually sort of have stayed the same or type of food. I am I we're we're doing the same menu in the loft the past 20 years. I'm doing from 2003 or 2006, I opened Delhi Bistro. I had a small delicatessen before that, and then we extended into the bistro deli. And we're doing the exact same food we're still you know it's still the cod and chips or whatever you know and mm -hmm. people know what the expectations are and that's it and i think that it's one of the things like you know if you're doing something well stick to it and then yeah. you know evolve with the other things because the thing is too people want to put the best thing in their in their bodies now i think from covid people are looking at what's going into their mouths where is it coming yeah. from yeah, absolutely. Dairy free, gluten free, sugar free, and we give all we give all that. And um, because what we have done is, you know, with our salad dressings, our salad dressings will be brighter gold. You yeah. know, it, you yeah. know, uh, homegrown yeah. product. It'll be natural umber, um, apple cider vinegar down the road. Homegrown product. A, a young fella. And do you promote morning. that? Do you promote your provenance? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and we sell it as well to take home. Yeah. And what about you, Dermot? What, what do you do to keep ahead of the pace or be innovative in your offerings? Uh, definitely, you know, like, you know, there, well, we've done this pre-COVID, you know, uh, it was a, a, the Moiley Cattle Society. There's a local farmer here up in Slack, Neil, a fella, Declan O'Kean. Look, he sings in the bar, but he, he also, him and, him and an uncle run uh, a wee That's Moiley funny. farm. So we, yeah. we bought the Moiley cow and we actually had the, its birth certificate and it's on the menu and that there. And we get the full story of how this cow was reared 
uh, two mile out, out, out of the village here, you know. And uh, we had people come from, travel from Larne and from Enniskill to, to, to taste that moily beef. <laughs> and that, that. So, so that, that we found that found great. Like, week, and I was on the farm with the Sturgeon. Can you imagine me in a farm? <laughs> 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 that's the, that's the end. That's one thing, yeah, I was in one thing, the Sturgeon with yeah. the end, but they took me to the farm to actually meet the... Mm. The, the, the cattle and all it was like yeah. and then I went to uh, yeah. another area in mid uh, Ulster that they do their own preserves uh, one thing that I have to say James as regards the, the Europa there I've stayed in it a few times and they do a fantastic breakfast there and the provenance of food they used to do a wee book there of even do, yeah. where the eggs were from where, yeah. where your jams were from yeah. And uh, look, you know, I thought it was just really, really fantastic, you know, to do that, you know. And uh, I know, Dermot, one of, one of our other questions here is from Colin Murphy, who's actually an income tour operator, you know, that comes into mm -hmm. the city. And really, Colin's making the, uh, emphasising the point that in terms of us being, you know, producing for our guests, it's really important, as you said there, Dermot, for us to always be promoting and in contact with our suppliers to make sure mm -hmm. when we get it, it is good. And when we get it and it's yeah. not good, we tell them it's not good. Mm -hmm. So that we're yeah. always, we always have that, um, uh, so that you build that relationship and camaraderie as much with your customers as you do with your suppliers, because we're mm -hmm. putting out the end product on their behalf. And again, with the tour mm -hmm. operators, I mean, the Europe is a massive touring hotel. I mean, we could yeah. have 30 tour groups in of a week, dinner, bed and breakfast. And that's a lot of bags in and bags out and 20 yeah. beds. Yeah. But also yeah. work with the tour operators because they're coming for dinner. And just because you think they're tour groups or they're tour, they want to sample the finest of Irish cuisine too. Yeah. Yeah. So giving them exactly. an impact of that provenance mm -hmm. and telling mm -hmm. the story. Sure, the yeah. Yanks love hearing about our honeybee sausages or you know, your Lesturgan burgers or whatever, and mm -hmm. reading the story and reading, I think, and I think that's, that's something yes, very, that larger very important. internationals don't do quite as well as we do. We want to tell the story about our provenance and mm -hmm. where we come from and what we do. But the thing is too, that we, you know, we have the best food. We have yeah, the best, best food conscious. in the world because yeah. we, we have the governance behind to make sure that it is quality personified, you know, and I, I'm all for the, for making sure that, you know, you know, I, I, I why would we sell New, New Zealand lamb when we've got farmers here with sheep uh, and yeah. lambs themselves, you know, that this is, this is what we, we need to be looking at. And, you know, I do have five mile town goat cheese you know we will we will continue to keep it local as local as yeah. local as we possibly can it's got it's a real honey pot for mm -hmm. artisans isn't it really it when, is. when, when you think about i was down in bali lisk yes. and I, you just get blown away when you go in and see mm -hmm. what the quality of what comes out of the size mm -hmm. of the surroundings you yeah. know i was at boatyard gin and last week i was at erin grove Mm -hmm. You know that they do the preserves and the, the chutneys and all. Yeah, Mark. They're middle, but what actually the quality of the produce that comes out of even small spaces, uh, and the technology and, and manpower, but they do it with love. These artisans produce yeah. stuff yeah. with love, and the yeah. pride that they have for it is you got to just respect that when you go to put it on the plate. Yeah. Tell people yeah, yeah. this is why yeah. this is where it's from. This is yeah. what good it actually is. It's won gold medal awards here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. Sale, quickly just reminded me it's the Waterson family that owned um the um, in the park. And in the park. And in the park. Yeah. That's it, Rodney. Yeah, yeah. Rodney Watson. Yeah, yeah. Waterson, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was the hotel that did exist on the hill, just in the brown uh, hill. Yeah. Um, just as it coming into Lynn Gallon, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's there, it's, oh, it's away a long time. Yeah, so it could do with a really good B and B because you know you've got Moy Park, as you say, you have loads of agriculture. Oh, that's huge. There, there's 140 uh, engineering companies in yeah. Dungannon area, as well as the likes of you know, all the food. 
<laughs> you're you, a I would actually be happy. I'd be happy if, if Hastings would do a nice wee bit of take and tag, you know, but all win, but all win. I, I might move down to home myself. And, yeah, well, I think you should. <laughs> Stag Moore. Do you remember Stag Moore was once a, a nice? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Country house Absolutely. Hotel. We just need something. You know, there's loads of uh, properties around here. I just wouldn't have the money, James, but you would probably have the contacts that, that would have the money. You yeah. could actually, we could, we'll put yeah, that on I, your... Well, I don't have the money either. <laughs> I work in... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it's something we do need. We do have, when we go to Cookstown, we'll have great hotels there in Cookstown to stay in as well. And of course, there's the Cork House out the road. Yeah. And green, but you know, like we are lacking bed space in that Ulster, you know. But so you you wouldn't know down the line something might crop up, you know. But it's uh, it is there's nothing near you at all, there, but is there? Well, there's a few, you know. There's Karen Tucker cabins. There's a few, you know, as uh, you know, Sperm View. You know, there's a few uh, the staycation operations there. Where's you know, Sperm View? Uh, there's a mountain view. It's up on on the Glen Sheen there. Oh yeah, uh, it yes, is. Yes. A, a, a staycation there as well, you know. So, but just wanted to add on there that you know during COVID, we done the hampers one Christmas. And, Very good. Uh, you're quite right. You're quite right in mentioning James there that Mud Ulster has got a lot of we use dark mountain cheese and and various other local producers yeah. there for for their hampers. And I even delved down into the causeway, taste the causeway, the chocolate manor and and uh, various, manor. various other artisans down there as well. Greater gold as well. I mean, yeah. I yes, um, I was yeah. You think I was a farmer? I'm not like that. I'm not the last person. You put on. I'm the last person you put on a farm, but I'm, I do <laughs> because you yeah. to, again. I go for the experience to experience what it is like, and yeah. then as you say, you yeah. can then almost talk passionately about it to people whenever you know. So knowing your products very, very important. It is very important, yeah. and it's important for the staff to know and taste them as well, and. Had, so they can have resonate, you know, with what it's about. Yeah. So what would your top tip is it be for, you know, the future, you know, I suppose, what are your fears about the future in terms of, you know, the costs rising? And do you have any genuine fears about the skills in your area? Or what confidence? I mean, I believe we've always got to be confident. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do think I'm confident that we, um, can continue with the skills and, and create more uh, and have people become more skilled. We would do, we- You would great college. We've, yes, but we have the backers. You know, we have, we have Southwest College here, you know, beside us. And then, you know, we're, we're allowed to have programs that is gonna help our business invest in the people that we have to become skilled, more skilled, better skilled, and, you know, for them to create. Because what we need to do is, is creating that they have somewhere that they're gonna be proud of and stay in the industry, you know, yeah. that they want to, you know, you know, I didn't pick hospitality because it's easy. I picked it because I love it. Yeah. You know, that's why I left my skills yeah. job and put my, my um, put like chicken my... vegetable soup, it's just a <laughs> stable diet. <laughs> but, you know, but that's where I came from and that was my background because my background was fishing. My father was a fisherman. So, like, I, so that's what we, we got to love. And I want people to love the food that we do because they're, it's only, it's around us. My know? father was a builder. And there was no chance I was going to be a builder. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think collaboration's key. Uh, I'm yeah. involved in a Mid Ulster tourism cluster. Uh, it's just recently rebranded there. Lock Sorry, and just Lock in terms and of that collaboration, you know, you've Mid Ulster and you've all the different districts. Do you ever come together and you know, you know, we really want to be. You know, you talk about the Ring of Kerry, you talk about the Fermanagh Lakeland, you talk about all this. Wouldn't it be great if, you know, each of the regions, we're going to talk Northern Ireland here to be politically correct, but that almost that we can go out to those incoming tour operators. Like, we're so accessible. You could drive from the North Coast right round again in, you know, two days, do the whole Northern Ireland and each of the provinces and have like that food experience, you know, creating food tourism yeah. mm -hmm. through the artisans, yeah. through the independent. Definitely. Like one mind, of cluster, don't want to do it. That's just for the bedroom. But then imagine if there was one for the whole of the Northern Ireland and 
say it was a two day package and they could experience all the delights that these artisans have to offer. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, well, you can experience if you want. At Christmas time, um, for Daddy and the Green Hampers, you can experience all those delights if you want them. Do you take them from all around the province? <laughs> well, we bring them all in. Okay. We, we yeah. sell them. Yeah. yeah. I'd say that we do domestically, but I think on that international arena, you know, why yeah. just, you know, the, these boats come in, they could dock for two days. They pre-book where they're going to. So they're going to Titanic. They're going to the Walls of Derry. They're mm -hmm. going to Giant's Causeway. They're mm -hmm. going now to Banbridge to the Game of Thrones thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's bound to be a food. You know, I don't know if you're in LinkedIn or anything in the park digital. We never even spoke about, you know, like Tracy's Farmyard. Mm -hmm. The hordes that go there, but even for the tourist board who promote Northern Ireland holistically, imagine if there was something that was just like an artisan trail around the whole that they take out the sell to the cruises. They go to visit to different people because not everybody wants to partake in it. But you mm -hmm. go to those people yeah. and you, you package innovative, creative packages throughout, whether they're coming in via Dublin and up north or they're coming into the ports. Just a thought. To James, the end of or, James um, that Mid Ulster Tourism Cluster is doing that there and doing it very successfully at the minute. Um, uh, Brona, Brona, the bakehouse there in Balahi. Uh, We've got Jamesy there, Glen Shea and the Country Farm. Yeah, you know about Jamesy, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I'm just thinking and, uh, if there was a connect between all the, the, the other enterprises. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, um, it's all about collaboration. Like, yeah. I'm sure there's about five cluster, mid Ulster cluster members are attending uh, the ITOA conference down in, down in the manor now tomorrow, where, where we're all meeting international buyers there. Who are from North America and worldwide, yeah, and who very are good. Up, yeah. up, putting together yeah. itineraries, and we're all collaborating together in Mid Ulster to try and keep people in the area for longer dwell time, and that collaboration is working really, really well. To be straight with you, you know, that's good. Well, guys, the next time I'm driving home, Claire, I might call in and see you. I don't think I've ever been in Swathra in quite some time, Dermot. But if you that's, a, that's yeah. a Sunday night. Sunday drive. Sunday, James, if, you're, if you're ever up, please do call in and say hello. Yeah, well, well, surely. James, there's a, there's a Christmas market on this weekend. On yes, Saturday it, night starts, and, it starts on Friday. Uh, I will swap the Christmas markets on this weekend. It starts on Saturday. And we have 15 stalls and amusements in a small village in Swatra. And there, there's loads going on in Ulster for Christmas. Very good. Uh, and you know, you the, do jungle you know? I, the jungle and I have a great Christmas. Sorry? How did they promote that? We promote it online. Yeah. Online and through your Facebook and social channels, you know. You know, but the other thing is too, James, you know, down in Middle East area, like families do want experiences and they want to take their their their, their children locally. So, you know, and, and we do we do avail of that. And um, we just as as Dermot says, you know, there's a, there has to be but maybe just be a bit more collaboration and allow people to know exactly what's going on. Well, I think the three of us can say to everybody that, that's listening, you know, we've had to adapt, we've had to change, we will continue to adapt and continue to change. We do appreciate that people genuinely, you know, whether they're cooking in the produce, and I love this, only because our hotels are getting better and better, because it used to be, why did everybody go to hotel foods? See when you're pride in what you're presenting in front of someone, See when you have that talent in the kitchen and you don't have to worry about that. All you've got to do is worry about the guest and the experience and talk to them. That's priceless. And mm -hmm. I think that's what locally owned people do best because they truly believe in that thing and, and they have that ingrained in their people. So, And I think that happens in the regions more so than, than in, in other places. So that's something to be very proud of. But I think we all agree that hospitality is in our soul. Yeah. <laughs> it's in our DNA. <laughs> yeah. It is. For other people. We're, we're just actors without the stage. It's rewarding. <laughs> it's hugely I, rewarding as well. Yeah, but I think I, uh, I think satisfaction that you've done a, a, a job well done and people are, are walking out happy. And, you know, not everybody's going to be happy. And... Well, I don't perceive to make everyone happy, but if our if the food that's coming from our producers locally 
are the best that they can produce that they're proud of, then we're mm -hmm. proud to cook and serve it because it doesn't take this it doesn't take an awful lot to and make in that. reality, can I ask you like because we often if I go in the past, which I do at Christmas still, um, mm -hmm. because I love I love the past. Yeah. I love the pressure of the past because the chefs are so cheeky, but you've got like a hundred <laughs> You might have 150 covers going out between X, Y, and Z. Have you ever lost? Have you ever lost a service? Like really, you're just on the edge of I if I lose it here, this is gonna be like a oh, it's all gonna go pear shaped. Yeah. Well, sometimes like I very rarely even have to, to be in the kitchen. I walk through it and stop and talk to people, but you know, something the only you're about to do that. <laughs> but the thing is that you know sometimes when things are occur as not happening and you can't get out of it you know you said about the deep breaths that the, the yeah. you just have to take deep breaths and you only have to do one thing at a time because that's all we can do in life is one thing in, at a time. secret tip in for three hold for four <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I know. Well, look, I want to thank, um, I, I think the Enterprise Week has been very successful so far. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get to some of the things that have, have been on that I know I've missed and would have been delighted to hear and also learn from. I certainly have learned um, this morning from yourself, James. Um, and I, I think that the caption of to adapt, to evolve and overcome, I, I love the three words because yes. I think that's what we do every day, yeah, you know, good. and that's our norm. And they're probably going to tell us at the end that the three of us could speak for the whole of Mid Ulster. <laughs> <laughs> Talking horses. Talking horses. So I think that's us. <laughs> we're, we're over or a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, but I mean, absolute privilege to be here and to speak with both of you. Um, wishing you a very, very successful, busy season ahead. Yeah. Um, lots of rest in the new year. Yes. Not too much rest. Not too much rest. <laughs> a few days would be good. A few days, yeah. Uh -huh. Christmas Are any, day I just want to... any open Christmas Day? No. No. Christmas Day and no. Boxing Day, I don't open. I don't open ever on Christmas Eve night. And I never open a New Year's Eve night. I even know it's going to be a Saturday this year. Because you know something? The staff need time at yeah. home. Well, yeah. this is my this is my first Christmas in twenty seven years, not to be in charge of a unit. Okay. I have to go and visit yeah. them and help them, but I mean, yeah, uh, yeah it's it's the first time I'll have it off for Christmas Day ish, off ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll still be in to make sure it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you no, very we much. Close, uh -huh. We close, close Christmas Day, Boxing Day for food. We close Christmas Day and Boxing Day for food, but we still open the bar Christmas Day and Boxing Day. But oh, it's not Christmas as pressure. Morning, I bet you in the bar is the Christmas thing. Oh, it is. It is surely. Uh, there's a queue of barmen looking to do the bar because they get the extra tips, James. You see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's I, I, I like that can be because James, all the women are coming in and leaving the husbands at home to get the Christmas dinner on, and it'll be full of women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. It's what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very much. All the best. Thanks, very Claire. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Bye-bye. Thanks, all the best. Bye-bye.